Hi, my name is Carrie Barnum, and I am here for Free Advice Friday, the hour every Friday we get together to talk about books, book marketing, and all things about being an author. And today I am so excited to be joined by Holly Shannon. Holly is, is, she calls herself the Swiss Army Knife of business and marketing, and I have seen that to play out for sure. Holly is the creator and the host of the podcast, Culture Factor, and also the author of Zero to Podcast. There's her book right there. And she has agreed to join us today. We actually were connected by a mutual acquaintance and she agreed to join us to talk about podcasting, how to start one and all the juicy tidbits that we want to know about how the average person starts a podcast and how to make it successful. So thank you for joining us, Holly. Thank you, Carrie. I'm really excited to be here and so excited to talk to your community. I cannot believe how many people got up on that West Coast to join us today. Thank you. Yeah. It's awesome. And they are awesome. All right. So one of the questions, we do take questions live in our Q&A. So if you're joining us on Zoom, it's just newshelves.com slash FAF. And we have friends over on Facebook streaming and, of course, a replay on YouTube. And our live questions, and one of the first ones that we've gotten in is, how did you start a podcast? Is this something where you in radio or how did you make this jump onto podcasting? So... Um... I'm going to give you the short answer that it was completely by accident. And I had zero experience in audio, zero experience in broadcasting. Um, and so I think that is why um, I love the medium so much because it feels accessible to anybody. Like anybody can start one. And you know, there's a lot of people that come to it with audio engineering background. They've done a little bit of radio. Um, it, 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 they could come to the table from a lot of different angles. I didn't have that. I did have marketing background where I'd been um, front facing, client facing when I did uh, events in the conference and trade show space. So I was very comfortable talking directly with people but i'll be honest with you i had a little bit of imposter syndrome and was a little bit nervous about this um in the beginning but you know you find your cadence when you uh take the time to do it on a regular basis it's it's like lifting weights yeah and i love that i love that you had no experience to be honest because i feel like that's most of us and it feels very intimidating and i do know of some very successful podcasters but most of them had like crazy experience so they're like oh yeah it's just on my audio deck and using all these words that are like over my head um yeah so what did you start with did you like go get a sound booth do you have a special microphone you know what, I, I'm from the school of thought that I like the lowest barrier of entry on everything. So I had no experience, so I went on YouTube University and I learned how to do everything I needed to do. Um, I did uh, Google University, uh, they were a little helpful too, and just scouring to find what I needed. Um, my microphone is actually the least expensive opener. It's a Samsung Q2U mic. That's all on my website, so you don't have to write it down or remember it if you need to just like jump back to that. Um, I got the whole kit for like under $100 on wow. Amazon, uh, and it came with like the tripod and headset and the whole, and all the cords that I needed. Um, it's just most important that you have a directional mic. Uh, I did not have a beautiful studio. Um, I actually lived in a house in Connecticut when I started it, and now I'm in an apartment in DC, and my kitchen is my studio. Uh, but guess what? Like your closet could be your studio. In fact, you'll get the best sound in your closet surrounded by your clothes because they absorb any uh, echoes. So very inexpensive equipment, no special rooms for it, and zero experience. So anybody can do this. And that's, I wanted to make this accessible to all of you. Um, so feel free to hit me with questions. I'm happy to, to help with that. Great. 
Thank you. And so you have been podcasting for several years now. Can you tell us about what your podcast is about? How how many episodes or seasons you have? Okay, so I'm in my second season. It's really technically my third season because I rebranded the show twice. Um, and I started about a year and a half ago and have scaled the show myself um, in that process. It's in the top 2% of all podcasts right now. And again, I came to the table with no experience. The show started, the conversation was about company culture from the C-suite. So I was having conversations with leaders and um, entrepreneurs um, all across the country about what company culture meant to them. You know, they write that mission statement on their website, but are they walking the talk, right? And when I started the podcast, we immediately were immersed in COVID and lockdowns everywhere. So as everybody knows, everybody immediately went remote, work from home, which changed the whole landscape of what company culture looked like for most businesses. So I spent um i spent like around 25 episodes talking about that and at about episode 25 i rebranded to talk about um still company culture but from the from the emerging leadership from not just from the c-suite because everybody was work from home and yeah. so people throughout uh, businesses were now taking leadership roles that they hadn't intended. Um, it, it just changed the dynamic, right, for everybody. Yeah, um, sure. And and then at about, I'm going to say around episode 55-ish, I just couldn't talk about company culture anymore because three clear lanes emerged from my study in, in talking to the C-suite and leadership. Um, a very clear line in mental health and burnout started to, to show itself. And I'm not a therapist, so I was really concerned about focusing on just that. Um, I didn't want to trigger people and ask the wrong questions without that uh, background. Mm -hmm. DEI is also a really, uh, which stands for diversity, equity, and inclusion. That was a clear lane that came out of uh, yep. the pandemic. Um, but again, I wasn't in HR, so I really didn't feel that I had the tools to take it down the road that it needed to. But the third lane was the gig economy and freelancers and the 57 million Americans that were uh, thrust into that either due to the great resignation or they were furloughed. And so that conversation around entrepreneurs, authors that are entrepreneurs, um, just anybody in the freelance economy really was very interesting to me. So I wanted to talk to creators. I want to talk to innovators. And so I rebranded the show this past September to focus on that. Um, so that's that's the joy of podcasting. It's yours and you can reshape it whenever you need to. So, Right. And I love that. And I think what I'm hearing, too, is that you need to podcast about something you either know or you're willing to jump into, because if you're going to talk about it and if you're going to really immerse yourself in it and and hope other people follow along for the journey, you need to either know what you're talking about or have a strong lineup of guests who know what they're talking about who can really give their experiences carrie you hit the nail on the head so if you're really curious and not an expert you can start a podcast about whatever warms your heart um mm -hmm. if you are an expert in something uh you can start a podcast about that but make no mistake consistency is is the is the name of the game in podcasting you need to publish your content regularly which i'm sure anybody tells you that about a newsletter or even sitting down to to write you know you have to be consistent and show up on a regular basis even when even when the material is terrible right? right like you still have to show up the next day and and keep going so um being passionate and or um painfully curious about things is is really like a a good way to start a podcast yeah absolutely and so you're talking about consistency does that mean it has to be weekly can it be monthly like what 
what in your experience, in your opinion, is consistent enough for a podcast to gain an audience? I think the best is once a week because I believe that your the community you start to build looks forward to hearing from you on a regular basis and you want to keep you want to keep something coming dri you know dripping in on a regular basis to keep people engaged and in the conversation you're continuing to have mm -hmm. um once a month you know you kind of lose you lose your audience a little they get you know maybe distracted and they move on to a different podcast or a different idea because they're waiting for your content to come out one of the beauty parts of it though is one of the things that i teach people when i'm helping them launch a podcast is that you can batch produce so mm -hmm. if you know that your writing season for example is i don't know spring summer you travel every year uh, you you put yourself in some remote location and, and that's when you really focus on it. I, I don't know. I, I mean, everybody has a different writing structure. Um, you can batch produce. So you can spend literally a solid week mm -hmm. just doing one interview each day so that when you schedule it to air, you have literally five, five to seven episodes that's, you know, like maybe you're only interviewing somebody for an hour or you're speaking yourself for 30 minutes or 10 minutes even. Mm -hmm. Every day you do that and then you batch produce everything and schedule it out. So there's ways to stay consistent, but manage it according to your personal life. Right. So it doesn't have to be live. Pre-recording is very standard in podcasting. Absolutely. I, I, in fact... I would say that recording a podcast, not live and pure audio, actually without the video mm -hmm. is what a podcast is it, in a yeah. purest sense. That's a podcast. What we're doing here live is great. And it's so nice to be able to interact and you can salt and pepper that in, by the way, like it doesn't, you could mm -hmm. do that once in a while and then grab that content for your podcast. Um, I will say that I do that in Clubhouse. Um, mm -hmm. I will meet my community in Clubhouse. I will record a live interview there where people can ask questions and be a part of the experience. And then I push that content out to my podcast into iTunes, Spotify, and, and all that after. Bless you, Carrie. <laughs> Thank you. I hit that mute button just in time. I felt it. You did. No, excuse me. Um, and I love that. And I think that you're right is that um, in even if I know quite a few podcasters who will record with video so you can kind of read off of your guests facial expressions and things like that, but they only post the audio recording. <clears throat> excuse me. So you don't, even if you do decide that you would like to interview face to face, I did um, a interview for a podcast this week where we did video, but it wasn't, it wasn't for the purpose of publishing it. It was so we could play off of each other's facial features and we didn't interrupt each other when we were talking because we could see that, you know, that I'm about to talk kind of thing going on. Uh, I agree. Like, I, th I, I think it goes both ways, actually. So uh, being um, a purist in podcasting for me, um, I really love the voice. I love the texture. I love the nuance. I love focusing on the cadence. And so a lot of social audio apps where you can just listen and mm -hmm. then respond um, or in the case of a podcast, if you record with no video, um, I kind of like that. Uh, it, it's not for everybody. Some people do need to feed off of the body language, but it does change the energy. So I've noticed, like if I listen to my older podcasts, my um, I think my voice is actually more measured and... Um, my cadence is just different. I don't know how I describe it. It might be imperceptible to somebody mm -hmm. who's a stranger. Uh, but for me, like right now, the energy, like I have your whole energy, Carrie, like I'm feeding yeah. off of it. There go my hands. There we go. Like, I, you know, I, I'm 
it ramps me up. I think yeah. my voice goes higher. Oh, um, okay. And I, yeah. and I think I talk faster. It's not horrible. Mm -hmm. It's just different. Faster. I, I am a serial, like, okay, I got to slow down. I'm just, I have so much to say that I just start talking like this. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh, okay. 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 I should mm -hmm. calm down. And especially when you're a little bit nervous and things like that, it's, it's hard to kind of take that breath and slow it down a little mm -hmm. bit. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. But you could do it both ways. You can, you can oh. just have the video on and record only the audio. You can have the video on and record both, or you can have no video and just record the audio, or you could go on a social app and you could record just audio through that. So there's many options. Yeah. And as far as how long, is there a standard or is there some secret requirement that we need to know about, about how long a podcast needs to be? Uh, does it need to be the same amount of time for every episode? Is 10 minutes better than a half hour or is two hours standard? So I'm, I'm going to liken it to like a bottle of wine, like whatever your preference is, you should do mm -hmm. it. Um, here's the thing. It used to be 20 to 30 minutes was the average that most people did because it was your commute to yeah. work back home. But a lot of people aren't in a car anymore. That's so, true. you know, they that 20 minutes might be they're preparing like their lunch or, or their dinner mm -hmm. or something like that now. Um, I think whatever you're capable of doing is going to be great. I think that you know, the argument could be made that everybody's, um, uh, how shall I say it? They're, they're, uh, how, how alert they are, like how long they can last on anything now. Like we, we mm -hmm. just, we're so bombarded by everything that some people yeah. like 10, 15 minutes is about all they're gonna listen to. But you know, then the argument could be made, but they're listening to Joe Rogan for three hours. So <laughs> it's like, I, I would say whatever you're capable of doing, that you mm -hmm. think you can provide really good quality content, then mm -hmm. that is where you start and stop. Yeah, and I think that no matter how long or short your podcast is, as long as you market it well to that audience, then it's fine. There are quite a few, you know, five, 10, 15 minute podcasts that really focus in on that as a marketing angle. Um, you know, the podcast you can listen to on your break, uh, you know, a five minute podcast that covers everything you need to know. So as long as the quality content is there, I don't think the time really matters as much unless, I mean, you got to be really good to keep people's attention for three hours or just be really open to getting <laughs> drunk on your podcast apparently. And um, because three <laughs> hours is a long time. Like that's like, let's sit and hang out. That's not a, a quick lesson there. That's true. That's true. And you're hundred percent right, Carrie. I think it's all about content in the end. I mean, we're talking to a room full of writers. So you know that you sit down and you write a piece, right? Maybe it's a chapter, maybe it's one page, maybe it's a paragraph, right? Mm -hmm. And you go back and you have to edit that multiple times because the idea is you don't want to lose the reader. You don't want to over embellish that you feel like you're that the person who's reading it feels like they've read the same thing three times in a row. The idea is that the content needs to be tight and it needs to get them through your story in um, and keep their attention, right? So it's right. it's the same thing with a podcast. If you have your material, like the three topics that you're going to cover because you're talking about, I don't know, the health and wellness area, and today you're talking about, I don't know, CBD or smoothies, like, I don't know. Um, you want to be to the point, right? You don't want to embellish right. too long. That's, it's like when you have to go read a recipe and they tell you their entire life story and you're like, give me the ingredients list. Exactly. I want to make your guacamole, please just tell me what's in it. So exactly. like the story gets you to be a little bit more involved, but enough is enough, like a short little bit and then let's dive in. And I think that that's probably the experience with podcasts and, and listeners as well, is that we want to know who yeah. we're listening to, but then get to the meat of it. 
Yeah, and, and make no mistake, you're building a community. So they do want to learn about you. They do want to get to know you. They want to, um, you want them to love you, right? You want them to learn about you. So it is important to share some of who you are, your authentic mm -hmm. self, the reason why you get up every day, why you care about that smoothie or why you care about company culture or why you care about a particular character you wrote about in your book. You do want to um, be a part of their journey and, and mm -hmm. by being a part of their journey, you have to let a piece of you in as well. Yeah, I agree. Um, so a couple of questions coming in and guys, I see all your questions, but I'm going to order them a little bit because I think it'll make more sense. And the first question is how cumbersome is the recording process? Like, okay, I read, let's say I record on zoom. What do I do after that? How long is it going to take me to take zoom video or audio and turn that into a podcast and how, like, how uh, is there a special uh, tool or app that you use? Okay, so um, that's a bigger question. I'm gonna try and distill it down a little bit. So um, you show up to Zoom, okay? You've, you've mm -hmm. sent the invitation to the person you wanna interview and they show up on Zoom and you record it. The file ends up on your computer now, let's just say, like, I have an Apple, so I use GarageBand because it's free software. Free rhymes mm -hmm. with me. I love that. <laughs> so I use GarageBand, um, but there are other tools that are free as well for if you use uh, a PC. I, I'm pretty sure it's uh, Audacity is one of the free ones, and I could look that up for you. Um, so let's just say you're using Apple and GarageBand for the moment. It's the same through line I'm going to take you through. So you're going to okay. take that audio file. Let's just talk audio for now and not video because that's a whole yeah. other animal. You're going to take just the audio file from Zoom and you're going to put it in GarageBand or Audacity, whichever you're working on. And then you're going to take like my little book here and there's a chapter on it that teaches you three tools. That's it. That's what I did. Three tools on YouTube University to edit my podcast. The first like 50 podcasts that you hear that I did, it was me with zero experience. Okay. So you do need to spend a little time. So in the beginning, it's going, it's going to be a little trial and error for you to get through that. Now, if you say, Holly, I definitely know I don't have time for it and I have no interest in doing it that's okay. You can hire somebody. There's people that will edit your podcast from 25 to $50 an episode. It's not, it's not a huge hurdle. However, what I will say is it's always good to learn each step. And the reason being is that you know what to ask for when you hire somebody and they don't take advantage of you. So really there's always, point. yeah, there's always something about learning the process to know what to ask for. So let's just say you edit your file. It's the ending says dot um, MP3. Okay, so that's an audio file is a dot MP3. You are going to upload that file to something that's called a podcast host, not you speaking, but it's actually a site and it's called a podcast mm -hmm. host. And there's many of them out there. Again, I have suggestions on my website. We won't get caught up with that right now because there's lots of software companies you can do that. So you upload that. Now what they do is they convert that file to what's called RSS feed. Now I hate acronyms. It stands for Real Simple Syndication. And yeah. it's the conversion that they make. And then that platform is what pushes your file out to iTunes, iHeartRadio. Spotify, Pandora, and all of them. So you sign up for that with them. You put your 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 code in there, this, this MP3 file with your trailer, and it goes out to all of those companies. And you only do it once. So every time you record now, you're on Zoom, you take your file, you edit it, that MP3, you export it to the podcast host, they convert mm -hmm. it, and it goes to all of those places. So it's like magic. You do it once. Love it. And so for all of our authors, let me put this in book speak. 
<laughs> this is a lot like when you take a Word document, you upload it to Draft to Digital, they turn it into an ebook and they push it out to Nook and um, Apple and Overdrive and all of those places. It's the same idea, just instead of taking your written words and pushing it out as an ebook, you take your MP3 file, your audio file, you upload it, and then they turn it into the RSS feed and distribute it out. Same idea, just a different medium. That's perfect. I love that. I think people need to see those analogies so yeah. they know it's not so scary. It may be scary the first time you do it, but then, you know, it's a muscle, right? You, you get used right. to it. Exactly. Well, and I, uh, the first time I uploaded a book, it took me three hours and there were tears. Uh, and now I do, you know, I do it all the time. I can get a book uploaded in 20 minutes, no problem. So um, I need to see you, Carrie, because this took me a little bit of time. It took me a hot minute on uh, Amazon and I self-published and I hated the process. And then when I was done, my friend said, oh, Holly, you should publish. You should make a book next. Zero to publish. I'm like, are you kidding? <laughs> So you're like, you, I want to yeah, do. that's so funny. I don't um, want to relive the nightmare. Yeah. No. I'm gonna well, hire Harry. Again, it's like a muscle. Uh, so those podcast hosts, do they take a percentage? Is there a monthly fee? How does the podcast host get paid? That's an excellent question. Excellent. So um, generally there's a fee and it's anywhere from about 20 to $30 a month. Um, there are sources out there that will let you start off. Um, I, I think it's Podbean lets you start off for free. Um, there might even be some other companies now that, that let you start off for free. I have a link on mine for Simplecast, which I think it gives you, I want to say the first month free or 50% off the first two months or something like that. And that one's like $20 to $30 a month. So you do have a recurring cost um, mm -hmm. that that does run into there. But um, the only thing I would tell you is that you don't have to get too caught up in all the different podcast hosts because they're all pretty similar and their price points are pretty similar. Yeah. I would say the only thing that I would make sure is that you don't choose a site that limits the amount of time that you can, okay. that you can do it. So if you do end up being that person that records once a week and your podcast is an hour long, um, you don't want to be limited by that. And I, and I don't think many do that, but that would probably be the only caveat I would say, like, don't choose one that is time oriented. Got it. That's a good point. All right. So we, we have, recorded our audio we've put it up on a podcast host we've got it out there it's now on iHeartRadio and itunes and everywhere what do we do with it and how do we market this podcast so um you know you are your marketing engine i'm sure you know that with your books right you're, you're all authors and you're always out there trying to get speaking engagements and bring books to the event um you're always trying to do maybe like a live on Instagram where, you know, you get to meet with your audience. Um, everybody does it differently. So social media is definitely a place you're going to have to spend a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. um, what I would say is, okay, so this is, this is my own little feeling about it. Um, you need to be, you need to approach it as the Marie Kondo of social media. So I made the mistake of not doing that. And I had two pages on Twitter, two on LinkedIn, two on Facebook, and two on Instagram. And then I wanted to kill myself. I wanted to jump off of a building. So I would say, pick the place you like to play in the most, that you've already maybe built somewhat of a community in, and just stay true to one, maybe two. Like, for example, if you're on Facebook, they've integrated with Instagram. So if you integrate your settings on them, every post you put on Instagram lands on Facebook and vice versa. So you can um, streamline how you post your content about uh, your, your podcast. And remember, it's always about the person you're talking to. 
Okay. And usually it's like one friend you have to think about it. Right. You don't think about yourself like, Hey, everybody, I'm so excited. I have this podcast. It's, I have something for you. I just built out this character and I think it's going to really relate to you and, and how you, um, handle parenthood or something like that. I'd love your, your feedback on it. So you're always talking to that person. That's good. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. I know that some of the concerns with authors is how much time it does this take when you record an episode from recording to getting it up and distributed out on all the, um, podcast channels. How long does that typically take you? So, I have streamlined what I do. Okay. I now have an editor, uh, which makes a difference, but I do, um, the recording. I share the files with them. I review, um, you know, I audit my own each episode. Um, I determine where the advertisement is going. Um, I built the intro, the outro, the music, the segues, and I have all of that in place. So the reason why I'm saying all this is not to scare you. It's to say like that first month is an investment in, in the time. It, it's going to take you more time that first month because you have to build out the components, but they become working templates. So I don't re-record my intro every time. I don't re-record the segues. I don't re-record my mid-roll advertisement. My editor just pops it in there, or I do. If I'm if if I he's sick and I need to edit my own podcast, which I can do because I taught myself that. So once you have templates in place, the process goes quicker and quicker. Now I'm gonna say each episode now takes about an hour after I've interviewed the person to go mm -hmm. through the steps of uploading it, editing it, popping, determining where my advertisement's going to go because you have to listen to it. But I, I use that time. I use that time wisely. Like for example, when I'm listening to a 30 minute podcast that I've recorded, and I'm trying to find, well, where do I pop the ad in? Like, where's a natural place to put that? Mm -hmm. I'm listening, but I have that podcast host open that I told you about, and I'm mm -hmm. popping in all the keywords I hear myself saying, or the client, you know, the, the interviewee saying. Um, mm -hmm. I'm copy and pasting their info that they gave me in uh, the calendar link and I'm popping it in for my description. I'm copy and pasting their relative links, you know, to, to their book or to their website and popping in there. So it's a, it's, I'm, I'm killing two birds with one stone, as they say. Right. So it's getting uploaded to the podcast site, but I'm doing all of the internal work on there. So I'm about efficiency. So I'm going to say it's about an hour, an episode. And I am on episode 80 something at this point. So in a year and a half in, um, but again, you could also pay somebody to do all of that stuff for you. If that's your barrier to entry. Right. And so podcasting, great. A lot of our writers already have blogs though. So if they have a blog, do they really need a podcast? Do they go hand in hand or is it just more work? So I would say, consider this an opportunity to work in the reverse. So a podcast um, is all of your content with you speaking, maybe either by yourself, because like you could, a podcast could be a moderator. It could just be you talking for 15 minutes once a week, right? Um, or it could be an interview. So something that you can capture, um, and it would cost a little bit more, um, I'm going to say maybe 20 or $30 a month, uh, more to capture the transcript. This is the gold. Okay. So, um, when you capture the transcript, it is a blog. That's essentially what it is. So you can copy your transcript and you can publish your blog, put it, on your blog and eliminate writing anything because it's you articulating all your thoughts. 
you can you could do one better you could say i'm going to be traveling and i have so much interesting content on this particular interview i'm going to cut it into several pieces and i'm going to schedule my blog for the next month with one paragraph from from this particular you know uh interview that i had and i might embellish a little bit on each one because i want to personalize it right so the great thing about podcasting is you have a transcript and it's a built-in blog if you find it difficult to uh write for your book as well as write for your blog it's a great starter for you and or mm -hmm. finisher like it could be everything um and then the other thing i would say about that is if we're going to talk acronyms seo search engine mm -hmm. optimization this is um Google's love language. They love long form content and key phrases. And so your transcript is full of that. So mm -hmm. if you cut and paste your transcript and put it as a blog on your website, um, you know, you have it all built in and it helps Google find you. Right, which is good because that's going to help the marketing of you and your books in general uh, because you're you're more searchable. It's easier to find. And to put it in, again, some bookish perspective is when we talk about podcasting versus blogging and why it might be great to do both and have them kind of in sync, think of it kind of like having a print book and an audio book. There are people who will only read in print or only on ebook. And then there are people who will only listen to audiobooks. So it's not that one is better than the other. It's that if you want to catch every available a listener, reader, if you want to get as many people as possible listening or interacting with you and your content, then doing both will just take you further. It's not one or the other. It's that both allows you to hit more audience and more audience can mean more book sales for you and more attention for your brand. Yeah, a hundred percent, a thousand percent, Carrie. Yes. yes. Um, so if someone decides to do this and now we understand and Holly did do a blog for new shelves, which I'm going to just, um, put up right now. Um, it's just on newshelf.com slash blog. It's the first one up there right now. And her blog talks at length about how you can use podcasting content for your social media, for your blog, um, for your newsletter, so that it's kind of a way that you are creating content, which a lot of us kind of struggle with. Like, what do I say? How do I interact? And so in some ways it can help you create content. And I think this is particularly helpful for nonfiction authors. I think fiction authors may have a little bit harder of a time creating that, um, that crossover and feeling like it, it matters because if you're writing about, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're writing fiction and you are going to talk or have a podcast, well, then you're probably going to write about the craft a little bit more than uh, what your reader may enjoy. But that is a good way to get more people and kind of spread yourself out because writers are readers. So if you are getting mystery writers to listen to your podcast, chances are they'll probably also read your book because that's what they like and that's what they enjoy. So there can be some crossover there, but it is, you have to be a little bit more um, purposeful with that crossover. Whereas nonfiction, I think is, it's just natural. It's what you're talking about anyway. Yeah. You know, it's, it's such an interesting contrast and I love that you brought that up. So what I would love to add to that is that like I love to read fiction. So I always find it interesting about the character development. So your podcast, it, say it is about the book that you just wrote. Uh, it's an opportunity to engage your community and say, you know, when I developed that character, uh, Jane, who, you know, struggled so much, I was taken back to this person I met in college and it was part of how I crafted her struggle or you can talk about, um, you know, a book you are writing and mm -hmm. maybe you are talking about the character and you can engage your audience. You can bring them in on 
say an Instagram live and let them throw ideas out and be a part of the development of a character or mm -hmm you can talk about the inspirations of maybe the cities that you chose where certain things took place, or if it's like historical fiction, you know, maybe you can talk about the study that went into understanding Paris in 1830 so that your character was in sync with that time frame. So I mm -hmm. think there's a lot of elements of fiction um, that if somebody is really into the book, they would love to know more about the development of all aspects of it or your process, like how you how you came to that point in wanting to uh, use Paris in the 1930s. So right. I, I think it's for both. Well, and we are seeing where video, and now this would be if you podcasted and did video, but um, video is trending. That's TikTok and Instagram and Facebook. It's trending. And sometimes you can take little snippets of video and use it that way. Uh, most of those people who are trending and are making tons of video, they didn't actually like spur of the moment, just decide and catch something hilariously funny or witty. They plan that out. And so sometimes having that can be another content switch over um and yeah you're right because they all say that now like instagram they wrote like they're only going to optimize for reels and i will tell you it is true i've i've done it on instagram and my posts feed uh automatically to my followers because i can track it on my insights mm -hmm. um which by the way can end up being an echo chamber right because you just keep right. talking to the same audience but when i post a reel it goes to like 10 or fifteen thousand yeah. non followers so they're feeding it out and it's worth the effort and and like carrie said if you do the video portion of it you can produce micro clips of 30 seconds, 60 seconds at that sweet spot in the conversation and, um, and use those. Just make sure you produce them in vertical format and not horizontal. Yeah, that's a really good tip. That's a good tip. Now, if someone does this, if they kind of start to get a following, how do you get paid advertisers? Is that something that's easy to do? Is it hard? Does it take a long time? So here's the thing. Um, I'm not going to lie. I, th I think it is a little bit harder to get advertisers, especially if you're, what you're doing is a little more mainstream. Um, talking about business, for example, which is what I talk about, um, there's a lot of podcasts out there. So it does take some time. Um, most sponsorship opportunities tend to be between about five and 10,000 downloads on a podcast, which can take you a month or a year to, to get. Um, I will say, though, if your podcast is in the mystery true crime genre um if you are talking about say relationships and it's hot and steamy um i will say that uh that definitely uh gets more traction so there's certain podcasts that definitely um grow faster than others uh if you find that there's something that you're talking about on a regular basis like say you are a writer in the health space, right? Health and wellness or something like that. And all the different people you interview are, say, from spas, uh, CBD, um, juice bars. I'm, I'm just picking a random thing right now just to give an example. And you do that on a regular basis. These are many partnerships that you're making along the way. And if you support those people in their social media attempts and you write comments and you tag them with your show and you highlight them, you create relationships with people and down the road, you can reach back out to them and say, hey, will you be interested in sponsoring my show and being on it on a regular basis? I have built up X amount of downloads per episode now, and my community is growing along with my other community, which is all of my fans on Facebook. So I have, I don't know, 5,000 followers on Facebook and I have 10,000 downloads. Would you like to right. be part of that? 
So you will have to work towards it. It's not instantaneous unless maybe you just hit the jackpot. Unless you're just famous. I mean, come on. Um, And how do people find, is it hard? And how do people find guests? How do you reach out and make sure that you have fresh interviews coming in? Um, How do you get people to say yes? Okay, so a few things. I will say nothing kicks a door open faster than an invitation to a podcast. Everybody loves to come on podcasts. I have kicked doors open on LinkedIn in cold emails to CEOs of big, huge companies, and they almost always say yes. So I don't think there's a barrier there. I think people love the opportunity for it's free press. They love the opportunity to be on a show. Um, There's a lot of podcast agents out there, people who look around for podcasts to put their uh, people on that rep, that they represent. So that the yeah. podcast agents and PR agencies might reach out to you. My inbox gets hit all the time. If I didn't want to look myself, I probably could just say yes to every e- email entry I get, like from podcast agents and PR agencies. Um, I would say though, um, I'm a little different that way. So my podcast is highly curated. It's really important to me that I hit the nail on the head with every interview that I have. And I want to feel that that person is very interesting, relatable, and has good content for my community that I've built. So Mm -hmm. I do my own research. I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on several newsletters, I read about different people and I find people that I think are really fabulous and then I reach out to them myself and I invite them to the show. And I'm gonna say eight out of 10 times they say yes, uh, unless they're just really busy and they push me out a little, like a few months out. But yeah, I haven't had any issues getting people to come on a show. Yeah, well, and because too, It's a, hey, let's sit and chat. There's no work involved usually or research or anything like that. So um, usually people are very willing. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of free press, um, I'm expecting all of you on the call to start your own podcast and have me on as the guest. No worries, I'll be there. Um, But I know there's a couple of us here who are like, yeah, this sounds great, but I don't want my own podcast. I want to be on other people's podcasts. So do you have any advice for how to be a great interviewee and how to pitch yourself to podcasts in a way that will get you booked? Yes. So um, I, I, I will say to you that I actually have a course on that on my website, how to be a podcast guest. Um, and if you're interested in that, you can just click on that link. And um, maybe just for this group here, I'll offer it. Um, on a discount. So right now it's $29.99 and I'll offer it to you guys for $19.99 if you want to take the course. Um, I just have to change that on the website. So before you book, (laughs) let me me jump on there and do that for you. Um, (laughs) But uh, the thing is, is that you want to be on the right podcast. So not all podcasts are created equal. And there's a lot that are in what's called pod fade, which means they started and then they stopped posting content after about 60 or 90 days. So what you need to do is you need to go on Google and you need to go on iTunes. This is in the course, this is part of it. So I'm just sharing a piece of that with you. And you wanna put in the search bar what you are about, okay? Um, Maybe it's author, maybe it's a uh, mystery or a memoir, um, mm-hmm. whatever, whatever your, your specialties are, you want to put them in there and you want to see what, and of course you want to put, if you're on Google, you want to put the word podcast in there. Um, if you're on like iTunes podcasts or Spotify, then you don't have to put the word podcast in the search. Right. And then you, you look for different shows that are in your wheelhouse. Then what I would suggest is make sure they're current. Because remember what I said about pod fade, Mm -hmm. like you want to know that they have recent material up. Um, Then you want to listen to 
a couple of episodes on a couple of different shows to make sure that like their voice resonates with yours, that you actually want to be interviewed by them. You know, maybe, maybe it's just somebody that like, you just don't like their style or maybe you don't believe in what they're saying. Like maybe they seem inauthentic or something. You just want to find ones that really are relevant to you. And then you need to craft an email. I have a template of that in the, um, in the course as well, where you're asking them, um, if you, if you could come on their show, but you want to let them know that in, in the first few sentences that you've listened to the show, that you've followed their show and maybe something that you liked about it. You also want to understand what you can discuss on the show. What can you bring to it? They don't want to recycle content, right? So if the last podcast they were talking about was using social media for marketing, then you don't want to offer the same thing. Okay. You want to offer, well, how about building in my case, a podcast, because it gives you a global voice. Whereas if Instagram shuts off tomorrow, your global voice is still out there. Like I want to talk about something else. So you want to know that when you're writing that email, that you're letting them know the value that you're going to bring to their show. Otherwise it's no interest to them. And the other thing you'll need to do is you'll need to attach what's called a one sheet in the business. And again, I have that on the course as well. Um, It's kind of like a mini resume for lack of a better way to put it. And it's going to talk about a little bit of your experience, but it's also going to talk about the things that you can talk about on their show. So there's a few steps you have to do. And Um, What I would say is, yes, that's probably a little bit of work too, but if you don't want to have your own podcast, it's a great way for you to get your voice out there. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, audiences all over the world. I'm, I'm heard in like 88 countries now. So whoever your podcast is that you jump on, they're being heard maybe in 50 or 200 countries. So it's really a great way to like get yourself out there. Um, and I would also add that you don't have to just do one or the other. You, you can do that and you might find you like it and then you start a podcast. But even yeah. me as a podcaster, I also go on other podcasts because it's, it's important. Mm-hmm. Well, it's part of marketing too. And that's, that's one great reason why to, um, what people may not realize is when you start a podcast or as a podcaster, when you have other people on your show, they market for you. They market to their own audience, which expands your audience. So Mm -hmm. that's the same idea. And when you are pitching yourself for a podcast, that is part of what you need to bring to the table is that, you know, I would love to be on your show to talk about the business of publishing, but I also want to make sure that we, you know, give you really great exposure for that episode. So I'd love to share it on my social media and X, Y, Z. So telling them how you are going to support them while asking them to support you, I think is very important. It's not just interview me. It's all about me. Hey, I have a book. It is making sure that it is a relationship that can really go both ways that can be of value because that is how not only you get booked or you get people to come on your show either way, depending on how you're running it, either either as the podcaster or pitching to be a guest, that is how you make long-term connections that will help you down the road, not just right now, but for a really long time. Exactly. You're cross-pollinating audiences and you're creating a partnership with the person you're interviewing. That's what we're doing here today, Carrie and yeah. I. And um, what you want to do as somebody who um, in Carrie's position, like she's brought me on to share with all of you, like I'm so honored to be in front of her community that she's nurtured and spent all this time with. So I'm going to say, Carrie, come on my show because you support this creator economy. You support uh, writers and, um, you know, a lot of people have some interesting stories to tell, especially since this time during COVID, like I think it's spurred a lot of, um, new talent. So Mm -hmm. that's part of the magic of all of this. So hopefully Carrie will come on culture factor. 
<laughs> I love it. Love it. Love it. So one last question before we go, because it's right at 11. Um, in your ideal world, you have someone come on your podcast, they record with you. What does the perfect guest do to share and promote that podcast after it's been recorded? So that is a really critical component. I'm so happy you asked that question. So you've been on somebody's show now. Let's just assume that you went on somebody's show. You want to, whatever digital asset they send you, like if they send you a picture or of the, uh, the logo, maybe your face is on it, you want to do organic posting um, on your social channels. You don't want to just wait for them to post something and then like it and then maybe write mm -hmm. a little comment because you're staying in their their um with their following and yes mm -hmm. it is respectful to do that you should like it and you should put a comment thank you so much for this opportunity but then take that digital asset and introduce it to your community so now you know that host and that show is now being sh shared directly with your unique community because that shows that you really care. And as a podcaster, we do spend time. Like I said to you, we spend about an hour. We, we spend a certain amount of money per month, not a ton, but like each episode costs a little bit, right? And so you hope that that person will we'll take advantage of that. Um, so you need to ask that, and that's typically in the letter when I launch, uh, when I'm getting ready to launch somebody's podcast, I let them know, I give them all the relevant links uh, to my community and where the show will be, and I ask them, please do an organic post on your favorite social media site, maybe even two of them if you don't mind, and um, share the good word. Exactly. And I think that's what it is, is wherever you're hanging out, wherever your audience is, that's where you talk about it. If you have a newsletter, that's where you could put it in there. You could work it in. If you're on Facebook or Instagram, whatever it may be, that's where you share. Um, a lot of people feel like they are, they have this responsibility to like take out ads or something like that. And you don't have to do that. You just need to share it to your audience and let them support and celebrate you because that's what your audience really does. And mm -hmm. so simply doing that is really helpful. And like you said, cross pollinating and sharing in a, uh, a very authentic way in a way that can get people excited, but doesn't feel uh, spammy. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know what, ask for the content, you know, when you're on that person's show, say, if you decide to produce some micro clips of our content or the full episode and video, and or if you get the transcript, I would be happy to share that on my website and on my social yes. media, they're going to build it all for you, you're going to have all these you know, vertical format, yeah. little micro videos. Now you don't have to do the heavy lifting. You just got to post it with some hashtags and you're off to the races. Um, or you get that transcript and you talk to that person for an hour and now you have all of that written content that you can put on your website as a blog post or take pieces of it and post for two weeks on LinkedIn. So use it. Exactly. Use Absolutely. It. Well, Holly, you have been amazing. Thank you for yeah. sharing with, Thanks. with our group here. We so appreciate you. Where is the best place if people would like to connect with you? Where is the best place to do that? So I have my website, hollyshannon.com, H-O-L-L-Y-S-H-A-N-N-O-N. So hop on there. I have links for equipment. I have uh, links for the course. I have links for my book. Um, or you can just hire me to launch it for you if you don't have the time and you just want to have it seamless and be on iTunes. So I can do that for you too. And I thank you all. I know a lot of you came very, very early. Um, from California and Seattle and all over. And I just have to thank you, Carrie, and thank you everybody for spending this time with me. It was really amazing. Oh, it was great. And you guys, I will also post links to um, Holly's website as well as that how to be a podcast guest um, that course, I will post that in our Facebook group, which is just Free Advice Fridays for Publishers and Authors. Um, so I will go and post that there so you can find it. Thank you all so much. We'll be back next week, 10 a.m. Eastern. Bring your questions and we'll answer them live. See you then. Thank you. Bye. Bye.